Hey guys, we are live. Today we're going to talk about New York wiretapping laws and the secret taping of conversations. Uh, and surprisingly, you know, while we use this information generally in the criminal realm, we get asked these questions all the time by business owners and private parties and employers and employees. And so I wanted to, to talk about that with you guys. And the issue that comes up very frequently in our practice is the recording of conversations. So the question usually is, can I do that here in New York? And can I use it against the other person I am recording in court? And the quick answer, as sneaky as it may sound, is yes, but not in every case. So let's look at a few examples. First, and one of the commonly asked questions is something along the lines of this. So my supervisor is constantly making inappropriate remarks, and I have no witnesses. I want to record him or her, and am I allowed to do that? The answer is yes, you can. Under New York law, as long as one of the parties to the conversation knows that the conversation is being recorded and consents to it, then that recording is permissible. So only one of you has to know, you, the recording party. Secret recordings in New York are legal. You do have to be careful though, because you have to make sure that your company has no written policy that forbids the secret recording of conversations of any other employees or at the workplace because that although it's legal it may be a violation of company policy that gets you terminated so you have to be very careful that the company doesn't have that policy but otherwise it is legal so here is a, another example which we come across very recently which never happened here okay my lawyer is a jerk and he keeps on changing his advice and saying things that i do not trust can I record my attorney? The answer again is yes, you can record your lawyer in New York. The same rule applies. Can your lawyer tape you? Can my lawyer tape me? So th this is a great question and we don't get it as often as can I tape my lawyer, but we, we do get it once in a while. Can, can your lawyer tape you? President Trump tweeted when he learned that his former counsel, Michael Cohen, had taped the 2016 conversation between the two of them, quote, what kind of lawyer would tape a client? But Cohen wiretaping Donald Trump is not illegal for three reasons, okay? First, the conversation took place in New York. Second, New York is a one-party consent state. And third, Cohen knew that their private conversation was being recorded, even though Donald Trump did not. So he satisfied the one-party consent rule. He was the one-party consenting, even though he was recording. But we get to the second part of this recorded conversation between uh, attorney Michael Cohen and President Donald Trump. It was legal, but was it ethical? Under 18 USC section 2511, the one-party consent law, it is legal to record a phone call or conversation as long as at least one party participating in that conversation is aware it is being recorded. So therefore, even under federal law, it is legal for an attorney to record a conversation that they are participating in, regardless of whether they have made the other parties aware. Okay. However, 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 and this is a big however here in New York, the New York State Bar Association Committee on Professional Ethics Opinion 515 states that except in special situations, it is improper for a lawyer engaged in private practice to record electronically a conversation with another attorney or any other person without first advising the other party. So, according to the New York Bar, even if a secret recording of a conversation is legal, it offends the traditional standards of fairness and candor that should characterize the practice of law. So an attorney can get in trouble and can get censured or suspended. Even if the recording is legal, it is not ethical in New York according to the bar. So um, here's a, uh, a few recent scenarios that, that we've dealt with here. I imagine apply to many of you, so I'm just gonna run through one or two of them, okay? What if I'm in New York but want to record someone in California? 
So the answer to this, and this literally came into us about two weeks ago, and it was a pretty serious situation. But the answer to that is, that's a bad idea. If you do business in California, you will end up in a lawsuit, or worse, in a criminal prosecution for recording someone without consent. If you intend to record conversations involving people located in other states, you should just play it safe and get the consent of all the parties before you do it. And California specifically has a two-party consent rule. Both parties must consent. Uh, for my New Jersey friends, uh, you are similar to New York. New Jersey is a one-party consent state. Today's was a little shorter um, than, than the last ones. And, and I'll take some questions now. And of course, if there's anything that anybody wants to ask privately, you can just message me separately, okay? Is it against the law to record someone through video? No, it is not, Katrin. Can a tape of a conversation from jail be used against the criminal defendant? No one gave consent to the conversation. Let's go into a story, okay? It's the case of the People versus Diaz, 2012. Mr. Diaz is arrested. He spends eight months in Rikers Island Correctional Facility before his family is able to post bail. His attorneys find out that prosecutors had gathered uh, a lot of new evidence against him. And uh, that evidence was a series of incriminating statements that Mr. Diaz made during four phone calls to his father from Rikers Island. In one of the calls, uh, Mr. Diaz insists that his face was covered up during the home invasion. Uh, in another of the phone calls, he says, I didn't beat no one up. And then he says there was no effing weapon. Although Mr. Diaz fought and claimed that the release of these recorded calls violated his Fourth Amendment rights, the trial court disagreed with him and Diaz was convicted and sentenced. This went up to the Court of Appeals, which rejected the argument that the tapes could not be used because no one consented. The court said that Diaz had given his implied consent. So for each of the 1,100 phone calls Mr. Diaz made from prison, the mere act of picking up the phone triggered a recording in Spanish and in English, informing him that this call may be monitored and recorded. So he made 1,100 phone calls. And every time he picked up the phone to make a phone call, there was a recording in both English and in Spanish saying this call may be recorded and monitored. The court said that those warnings and signs that were placed up all around the telephone area, as well as an inmate handbook, informed him. And the court said that, that that's too bad. So uh, the answer to you, Joe and Mike and, and everyone is that People have to understand that conversations on the phone with inmates are always being recorded and those statements can be used against them. Employers can implement a no recording policy even in a one party state. Can you elaborate on this? Yes, so, so employers uh, can in their handbooks and as company policy uh, implement a no recording of other employees policy within their company. While it can't be stopped it's not illegal like we said you can still record you can be terminated for your job for not following company policy right um so so basically if an employer says you cannot record the law doesn't prevent you from recording but the employer can say you can no longer work here if they find out that you've recorded because it is against company policy the rules are different for planting a recording device and not being present because neither of the parties in the conversation have consented. So the answer is that you cannot do that. You have to be a party to the conversation. One party to the conversation uh, must have consented. So if one of those two people are, are uh, have consented and there's a recording device, that's acceptable. But if you are a third party wiretapping, that cannot happen uh, on the one party consent rule, okay? Can employers ask that their employees leave their phones outside the office to retrieve at the end of the workday in an effort to safeguard themselves from recordings? The, the answer is that the employer can ask that employees leave their cell phones outside and, and we have uh, knowledge of employers that do that. You know, they're not doing it specifically to avoid recordings. Many of them are doing it uh, as policy because they don't want people communicating outside of the office with their phones or they don't want people on their phones during the workday. But the answer is yes, an employer can require an, uh, an employee to do so. What about in a custody battle? Again, as long as one party to the conversation knows the conversation is being recorded, then that conversation can be recorded. So for example, if there are if there is a couple in a custody battle and the husband is recording the wife and the wife does not know, that recording can be used in court. What about recording via social media? 
Uh, same rule. So as long as one party uh, has consented to it, you, then you can record. So Mike is saying, uh, what if he wants to record another employee at the Department of Corrections? The, the, and then you know, we have to get consent over the phone to record. If, if the employer requires consent over the phone, you must fire, uh, follow the employer's protocol or else you risk termination. It's still not required under the one party consent rule. So it's still legal to record in New York. However, if the employer says you must have the consent and you do not have it and the employer finds out, you can be terminated. All right, guys, it looks like we're out of questions. Uh, if anybody has anything else, you can uh, message me or call me. I hope you and your families are all safe and healthy, and I look forward to seeing you all when this is over.